Welcome to Coffee and Conversation. My name is Honorine, and today I'm with Kathleen Besley, who is pursuing a master in urban and regional planning. Kathleen, welcome, and thank you for being with me today. Of course. Thanks so much for having me. Let's start um, with a little introduction. Yeah. Well, my name is Caitlin Beasley. Um, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, so three hours east of Tallahassee. Um, I did my bachelor's at Florida State as well in international affairs and public administration. And I love Tallahassee. I loved FSU. So I wanted to continue my education there. Um, I'm currently just finished my third semester of my master's. And I just returned home from Ecuador as well, where I spent the summer. And I'm finishing my master's degree at Alborg University in Denmark. So I'm done taking class at FSU. And next semester, I'll be in Denmark. So yeah, I'm really excited for that. What are you doing in Denmark, you said? Finishing my master's. So we have a global exchange program and I'm going to be finishing up over there. Yeah. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah, I'm really excited. Why Denmark? Um, so Denmark is one of, like a lot of Nordic countries are pretty well renowned for their planning and the way that they view cities. It's a little more progressive than the way that we view cities in the United States. And at Alborg, they have a really awesome sustainable energy program and like environment, placing emphasis on the environment. So I'm really excited to go get another perspective on city planning over there. So yeah, yeah. So you said you had, uh, you, you have your bachelor in international affairs and now a master in um, regional planning. Um, what happened in between? What made you kind of change direction? So as a part of international affairs, they offer a wide range of classes, which I love so much about the program. But under my courses, I got the opportunity to take an urban and regional planning class. So I took the class. I really ended up enjoying it. And a group of master students actually came to talk to our class. And I was like, wow, these seem like really awesome people. I would love to be in this program. I applied and got in and chose urban planning. I just took a class in my undergrad and it seemed like an awesome culture of students. And it really is. I love the program so much. Oh, perfect. And um, tell me more about your research. What do you do exactly? So for my master's capstone project, instead of doing a studio, I chose to do a directed independent research. And I did this under one of my professors, Dennis Smith, and we had two doctoral students, Katie and Karina, who kind of advised our project. They had done a studio in Guatemala. So my directed independent research was a community needs assessment for a rural town in Ecuador. And I did it alongside two of my colleagues, Gabby Benitez and Mackenzie Schaefer. Um, and we did a whole community needs assessment where we did Qualtrics surveys, we did a little bit of GIS mapping, um, a lot of surveys over there. We did a 10 week, or not a 10 week, a 10 day research field trip in March. And then Mackenzie and I went back for a 10 week internship with a developer in, um, we went in May, May, and we just got back on Monday, so. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And out of all the countries in the world, why Ecuador? So actually a, a developer, Sean Kelly, he um, is a co-founder of Oceanside Farms, which is a company in Ecuador. He reached out to Robert Hunter. He was the former president of the American Planning Association. And Robert reached out to Florida State and Dennis about creating a comprehensive plan for the town. So what my research was, was kind of like a foundational layer for the comprehensive plan. So the university is really trying to have a studio come in maybe next spring, maybe in a couple semesters to do that comprehensive plan for the town. Wow, that's a wonderful project. Yeah, I, I want to be involved with it as much as I can. I know I'm going to be done with FSU, but anyone ever needs advice, I would love to be a part of future projects for that. Do you have an idea of what you're going to do after Dunmark? After Denmark, I've really thought about joining the Peace Corps. Uh, Dennis, who is probably the faculty member that I'm closest with, I took two classes with him, did my directed independent research under him. Um, he's a returned Peace Corps volunteer, and 
he has some awesome stories. And then one of my other professors, Dr. Petra Doan, she was also a returned Peace Corps volunteer and coupled the two of them together. Um, they've just said amazing things about it. So I would really like to try to do that. Um, I don't know, it's, it's like a, I think it's a 27 month contract. So mm -hmm. long time, but I don't have anything lined up afterwards. So I might as well. You are a first generation uh, college student. Um, what advice would you have to um, other students who are um, just like you, first generation? I guess you have to have a lot of confidence in yourself, pull yourself up by the bootstraps. It's, it's hard because um, my, my parents loved that I pursued education and that they were very understanding, but it's really hard to not have someone who's also been through it and also knows what it's like. So I would reach, reach out to everyone for help all the time. Like people are so willing to help with everything, um, apply for scholarships. I know there's a lot of first gen stuff out there and things that I didn't take advantage of. Um, I think it's the care center on campus. They do a lot of first generation stuff and I did not utilize that to my full advantage. So I would definitely say get involved because there is a lot of money that you can get for first gen and that's something that I regret. But yeah, just take help. How did you fund all your um, trips in March and in May um, in Ecuador? So in March, we actually got funding from the university. I think it was a little shy of $6,000 is what we got. So they paid for everything or not everything, but I think it was like travel. Um, and then our housing over there was actually paid for by the developer that brought us on. So same thing with my travels over the summer. My flight over there was privately, like I paid for that but my housing was paid for by the developer. And then I got paid on top of that. It was a paid internship. So the university did help, but they didn't pay for like per diem expenses. So food, all that kind of stuff. We couldn't, even though there was a decent amount of money left over, we couldn't use that for our per diem expenses. It had to be travel, accommodation. Um, I think I'm missing one thing, but yeah, pretty much just like the big plane ticket, uh, hotel, that kind of stuff. But it, it's a lot of paperwork too, which is crazy. So yeah, tell me more about your um, research trip. Uh, your research uh, trip. What did you um, What did you get out of it? I saw uh, lots of amazing pictures, especially with children. Um, so I know we talked about you know what you did over there, but what would you say like you got out of it? got out of it. I think I got, so it is a developing country and it, it's a very, very big difference from the United States. And I think gaining experience on, I gained a perspective on how other people live. Um, and I think that's something that'll be really valuable if I do want to join the Peace Corps, because I feel like the living conditions were similar as to what I would do in the Peace Corps. Um, I gained friendships. I think I got very, very close with my professors and the doctoral students. And that that is really fulfilling. And I think I'll have a lot of those friendships for probably the rest of my life. Um, so outside of academia, like friendships is probably what I gained. Um, but yeah, just experience for planning in developing countries, I think that that was really important to actually be on the ground. And because you can, I thought I knew what I was getting into, but you really don't until you're over there experiencing it. And then when I was there in March, I thought I knew, I thought I knew everything. And I came back in May and I was like, I don't know anything. So I think just being, being there uh, again for 10 weeks is significantly longer than the 10 days I was there. And I just, kind of learned how how other people live and I think that's really important I think that's amazing yeah that's probably my favorite part about traveling I really enjoy traveling but um just kind of seeing how other people do things what they eat how they just live I think it's really eye-opening and you take a lot for granted when you have accessibility to everything like I'm I just got back Monday and I'm like 
okay, this is, there's everything. There's a Starbucks, there's everything like in walking distance of me. But that's just a lot of things that you take for granted, which I'm glad that I got that experience to not, I guess, be a brat about my orders wrong and just really trivial things. And I saw a picture of you um, in kind of like a governmental setting. Um, mm -hmm. What was that about? So as a part of our research trip in March, we got to interview the vice mayor, the head of the planning department, and then we also got invited to speak with the mayor for a little bit. So it was just um, a part of our research. We did some surveys, or not surveys, questionnaires. No, not questionnaires. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, interviews, I guess just guided interviews, a little similar to this. They were, they were formal. Um, they lasted about two hours each, but mm -hmm. our research trip, um, our, our team, we split up and half of us interviewed the vice mayor the other half did the planning department. And then we put all that data in to our, um, to our research. It's, I don't know, I can give you the link if you wanna link it anywhere. It's uh, a long document, it's about like 180 pages, I think. Wow. Yeah. So we've been working on that for a long time. But um, yeah, we have all of those interview questions and that's, that's what we were doing there, just kind of understanding how the government works, how money works, um, projects, how development projects kind of go there. Um, different than the United States, significantly different. But yeah, we were just kind of understanding how the planning department and the municipal government operates. Amazing. That, yeah, that must have been a, an amazing experience to uh, be able to interview all those important people. Yeah, it was it was awesome. And they they posted it on their Facebook, which we were like, Ooh. but and then we actually got interviewed by I think it was the local news. My Spanish is not not great. So I was just kind of standing there. But um, yeah, we got interviewed by someone and it was with a big camera. So it might have been on TV, might have been online. I don't know. I never got to see it. But How do you see yourself in uh, five years from today? Five years from today? Hopefully not still living at my dad's house. Um, five years today. I would like to be working maybe in consulting, um, private development. I think I've always had more of an interest in private development. Um, I know that in planning, you kind of have to start in government and I think I, I got a good start um, working for a private developer. So I would like to be overseas. That would be, that would be cool. Maybe doing private development overseas out of the Peace Corps. And um, thank you so much for um, giving me um, some of your time on this Friday afternoon. Um, and uh, it was, yeah, it was great to know more about your research and um, about uh, what you did in Ecuador. Thank you so much for having me.